Hello, 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 and welcome to another coordinating call of DM25, the movement for Europe, featuring progressive ideas you won't hear anywhere else. Today, we're continuing our series of sessions where we discuss just one country, the political state of play in that country, and what DM25 could potentially do there. And today, that country is Italy. Last time, it was Germany. I know we said that today would be the UK, but the UK will actually be now in uh, two weeks from now. Um, we will start with uh, some brief interventions from uh, our coordinating collective members here, and then we'll move to the grassroots members in Italy who are joining us on the call today. Uh, we're going to keep our interventions uh, reasonably low if we can, so everyone's got the, the, the time to speak. Uh, well, reasonably short. And uh, if you out there have got any questions, comments, rants, concerns, anything you want to say, please put them in the YouTube chat since this is live. We'll read them out potentially between the interventions and put them to the panel. Okay, so let's kick it off with Yanis. Thank you, Mechon. Ciao, everyone. Hi to our comrades from Italy joining, as well as to all the other members of the, you know, the usual suspects of the CC. Uh, today we're talking about Italy, but it is incumbent upon me, upon us, uh, not to neglect the fact that uh, a crime against humanity is being perpetrated as we speak in the land of Palestine. The uh, coverage of what's going on there across Europe, let alone the world, is um, uh, vulgar and part of the crime committed in the Middle East. Uh, wherever you look, whether it's the BBC or any of our channels, you see reports on uh, number of deaths of missiles, um, a technical account of events without any mention of the fact that this is uh, the result of an ongoing establishment of a state of apartheid both in the occupied territories and, and that is very important, in the land of what's called Israel proper, the post-1948 borders. Uh, imagine if this was South Africa back in the era of apartheid and reports from Soweto uh, concentrated on violence by black youths, um, some reports on the violence of the police, without any mention of apart apartheid. That, I mean, of course, it was happening back then because there were many friends of the apartheid regime in the West that wanted to silence uh, uh, the truth. But the truth that remains silent is a guilty truth. And those who indulge in it knowingly, including our governments and including them, the media, are part of the problem. They are part of the, the um, assault on humanity and humanism. And one final thing, if anybody cares about, if anybody, if, if, a message to those who are worried about Hamas and Islamists. There can be no better gift to extremists on either side than the apartheid policies, which legitimize violence. I just wanted to, to, make, to make this point. Um, also, just to move to a completely different uh, uh, distraction from Italy, before we go straight into Italy, uh, in less than an hour, at um, uh, seven o'clock uh, Central European time, uh, let me invite all of you and everybody who's been watching to tune in to our Meta launch premiere. The Meta, let me remind you, is DM25s and Meta25s, new center for post-capitalist civilization. The launch is happening in less than an hour. Uh, I'm very keen to watch it because I know how much work has gone into it. Uh, we have messages from all the usual comrades, from you know, Noam Chomsky, uh, Ken Loach, uh, um, Naomi Klein, the whole thing. And this is a very important institution that we are creating. It's our own research and cultural center uh, for producing ideas and a new aesthetic that concerns the post-capitalist era, which has already begun, uh, which is, has begun in a dystopic way, but we hope that it's going to become more utopic in the future. Um, a few words about Italy. I'm very much looking forward to listening to you, so I'm not going to, to talk about Italy. 
uh, let me simply mention that um, some time ago, the coordinating collective, that is ASLOT, put together a number of questionnaires, one for each country in Europe, central important countries like Italy, but actually for most of the countries in Europe. Uh, the purpose of which, the purpose of that, that questionnaire being to start a process of crowdsourcing ideas uh, regarding what needs to be done in different countries. Uh, I am very, very pleased to announce that um, I've recently read the long answer I got from Italian comrades. Um, this questionnaire has been answered collectively. Uh, I have been very impressed by the high caliber of the answers that we got. Um, it doesn't matter whether one agrees with, with everything or disagree, disagrees with some of the things. Uh, it's a fantastic foundation on which to build a manifesto, a DiEM25 manifesto for Italy. And it's a very good foundation on which to build our next steps in Italy, the rebuilding of DiEM25 in Italy. Uh, with that, I'm going to shut up and pass the button on to Mehran again, because we're keen to listen to you folks as to what you think our next steps should be in Italy, in terms of the manifesto, in terms of uh, the NC, in terms of the movement, in other words, in terms of the electoral wing, in terms of how do we go about changing Italy. Thanks, Yanis. I'll just bring in Patrizia and then we'll move to um, the M Italy members. Patrizia, you had a few words? Yes, thank you, Megran. Hi, everyone. Let me welcome you once again and just keep going straight to the point because in order to leave space to all other intervention, I would say uh, just a few words. Key, uh, Italy is of course a key country for geographical reason, political reason and economical reason in the European Union. Now, the M25 policies um, are more than ever uh, in my opinion, but I hope not only in my opinion, uh, updated and useful for all of us. Uh, we should be again in the uh, public debate in Italy, even because uh, Draghi government has no opposition on the left. And I don't want to leave this privilege only to Meloni and all uh, the the company of Meloni and Touraj. Uh, we are now um, ready uh, to, to face the big challenge we have in our country. First of all, the job one is going to expire uh, in a few months, the freeze on layoffs. That means unemployment would be much more than ever. And then inequalities because of, of course, all the pandemic crisis, we are through. So uh, I want to thank you, uh, the big uh, job the uh, Italian electoral wing have done in the last one year and a half, because of course, uh, uh, we had a um, how we could say, um, a very complex period uh, after the last European election. We, we did mistakes, of course, but uh, we had the force, uh, thanks to the electoral wings also, to create a big, a big force in the territory. We have many DSC all around Italy, so this is a big force and we should address now this force uh, for the challenge I have mentioned. Um, so uh, let's give uh, the floor to all the intervention and see together how we can uh, address all we have worked together and we have done. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Patricia. Okay, Antonella, let's start with you. I think you're muted, Antonella, unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, I 
I wrote some thought just to be uh, quick. So um, the COVID has uh, not only caused more than uh, 123,000 deaths, uh, but in one year, it has resulted in one million more individuals living in poverty. The increase is frightening, and the total number of um, individuals who are struggling uh, in putting together lunch and dinner is now about 5 million point six. Um, um, quite uh, a little bit uh, less than 10% of the population. The citizen income uh, introduced by the government of Lega and Movement 5 Start has too many conditions and has, to, and has not alleviated poverty. Our welfare system has shown uh, all its weaknesses and uh, in fact, a reform of the social protection system has been announced for next summer by the Min Labour Minister of the um, Democratic Party. Many poor workers suffered during pandemic um, for sh because short-term contract or no contract at all vanished during the, the blockage of pandemic uh, and left them without protection, especially in catering, tourism, entertainment and cultural sector. Uh, young people and women have paid the highest price in terms of uh, rising unemployment and uh, small and micro enterprises, which are the backbone of the country in economic term finds themselves much deeper in debt and undercapitalized after months of blockage. Um, some hundreds uh, of uh, self-employed workers and micro uh, enterprises will not restart because the public measure to support the economy have only partially covered their fixed cost. Um, but the new normality designed by the recovery and resilient plan is not different than a more generous business as usual. It allocated only 40% of plan um, to a so-called green revolution um, a totally misleading name, far less than uh, uh, France and Germany in percentage. The bulk of the funds go to high-speed uh, um, uh, transport and large-scale infrastructure projects, uh, blue and grey hydrogen. There are plans to uh, uh, introduce administrative simplification of env environmental impact assessment, which many fear uh, will speed up uh, a country over overbuilding process. Um, so uh, there is a lack uh, of industrial um, policy measure to accompany uh, to a campaign um, to take the reconversion of a productive sector such as intensive uh, farming and uh, single-use uh, plastic uh, sector um, that uh, are produced um, in Italy for 40% of Europe uh, production. Um, there is a lack of um, or insufficient funding for basic research in universities, schools and health uh, public service. Um, so in face of all these, opposition is muted, as uh, Patrizia said, a cultural operation is needed to awaken people. 
So, Anton Antonella, a, sorry yeah. if I can if I can ask you just to um, conclude soon because we've got a yeah, lot of people yeah, to get through. I, sorry I, to I'm interrupt. I'm just uh, <laughs> close to the conclusion, and uh, as uh, PNC and uh, in agreement with the electoral wing, we believe that uh, it's necessary to come together in summer in a workshop to discuss uh, new economic narrative and to design together. Um, a transformative action. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Antonella. Sorry about that. Next up, Alessandra. Hi, uh, hi everyone. And first of all, I'm very thankful to Yanis for appreciating the hard work that uh, has been done on the on the questionnaire by um, the electoral wing and the Italian comrades. And next, uh, I'd like to speak about uh, topical issues as a as a southerner because I'm uh, I'm from Naples. And um, I um, want to touch the fact that the, the recovery plan hasn't given the south, uh, the south of Italy enough guarantees to develop and nor at is open the convergence with, um, between the south and the center and the north, the region of the center and the north. The national recovery plan has allocated 82 billion euro, but the plan uh, as Mr. to make explicit the role of the South in its main missions, with particular reference to the green transition and also the blue, the blue economy. In fact, the, in many Mediterranean regions, the sea, as in Campania where I was born, the sea is the main player. And here, a third of global maritime trade passes through each year, and warming is occurring at a rate of 20% faster than the global, global average. This is due to the fact that uh, to the climate, climate change and the uh, human activities that severe, in, severely impact the Mediterranean region. And projection indicates that by uh, 2050, more plastic we will be swimming in the sea than fish. In this perspective, I'd like to point out that many scientists see the blue economy as a, a response that can gen generate a positive uh, long term impact on the health of the seas, uh, of the ocean, and especially of the Mediterranean Sea, on which uh, many uh, regions of Italy are located. And um, the blue economy aims to eliminate any emissions that are harmful to the planet and revolutionizing production systems through biomimesis. So uh, I think that as the 25 it should aim towards a prosperous and peaceful Mediterranean region in which people can enjoy a high quality of life. The M25 can tackle these issues that can be achieved through strong involvement of stakeholders, cooperation, solidarity, equity, and participatory governance. So uh, with my pay uh, attention to the, to the sea as a player and to the sea um, as a place where uh, many inhabitants of Italy uh, live. Mm. Thank you for the attention. Thank you, Alessandra. We have a, a question from the chat that maybe someone would like to answer. Um, how high is the anti-European spirit in Italy right now? Uh, next speaker is Melita. Hi, hello everyone. It's very nice to meet you all. Um, I don't know, I have to address the question in chat or no, maybe, I don't know. As you like. Uh, okay, as you like. Well, actually, I'd like to say a few words about a few comments about this, the political situation in Italy. As Patrizia mentioned before, um, the only real alternative to Draghi's government is Meloni. There are a few progressive forces in Italy, but they are not well structured and not well organized. So this is why I think the M25 could, be, um, could become a beacon for the progressive landscape. And to address the question in chat, 
uh, in the chat. I think Italy is a very conservative country. And right now, the, um, the anti-Europe spirit, I would say not strong, but uh, there is a bit of, you know, aeroscepticism in Italy right now. Um, always, you know, remembering that Italy is one of the founder members of the European Union. So, um, but still, this is why I think uh, the M25 could work because the M25 has very specific features. It, it's a pan-European movement. It's a, transnation, it's a transnational movement. And it has very tight links with the progressive international. So this is why I think that if well played, it could become a beacon, as I said before. And it could become a leader in the with all the other progressive forces. And at this point, actually, I have to say I'm a bit baffled and I'd like to have some information by the CC. Um, I, I read that we are not going to take part in the conference of the future of Europe. And not that I think that the results are going to, you know, to, I don't have high hopes for the results. The institutional results, I think, are going to be uh, low key and low profile, but I think we could exploit it. So I'd like just to have, you know, some, some, some information later, if not right now. Uh, but yes, if well played, I think DiEM25 has, you know, a bright future in Italy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melita. Um... Next up, Ludovico, because Nicolo's, I think, not with us yet. So Ludovico can go next. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, I will very briefly, uh, I would like to um, thank uh, Yanis for the uh, appreciation for the work that went into writing uh, the uh, what we believe is a, a foundation for moving towards uh, a... Uh, platform for uh, the Italian, uh, the, the the party of the 25 in Italy, um, kind of drawing on previous, uh, you know, previous speeches, I would like to say that uh, um, Italy is not only in a situation where we have a government that is an expression of a parliamentary majority that is not, uh, kind of like was not uh, supported by a democratic vote, uh, but it's also a moment in which many parties within that majority and outside that majority have, to one degree or another, suspended their own internal accountability proce processes. So not only we have a system where there's close to no opposition to this government, but there's also close to no way of uh, having one's voice heard and of uh, uh, kind of uh, ensuring accountability. And to some extent, we wanted to counter that uh, uh, internally, creating a participatory process that started with a group of authors uh, for uh, the writing of the program. Uh, many of them they are here today. And we want to take that not as a, as a conclusion of uh, the process of writing of the pr program itself, but rather as a starting point, which departed from the wealth of material that our movement has already in many policy areas, I, for example, technological sovereignty, uh, the New Deal for Europe, Green New Deal, uh, foreign policy, and, uh, and so forth. Um, we also highlighted some elements of uh, both the policies and the questionnaire that probably will require specific uh, zooming in, for example, the issue of infrastructures and utilities, the issue of university, uh, both in terms of governance and of uh, 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 recruitment of uh, university staff and for example the issue of anti-mafia that is extremely important both uh, because of the history of Italy and because of the uh, or previous experiences of activism and organizations that our uh, movement can interface itself with. Um, we are now confronted with a situation where kind of the unprecedented amount of resources that uh, uh, the recovery plan represents, even with the problems of, you know, uh, overwhelming the amount of them deriving from loans rather than grants, and uh, uh, it being written by private uh, organizations rather than uh, following the democratic processes. But in the content itself of this recovery plan, we are confronted now with an, an, an incredible display of disaster capitalism, like the idea that this amount of resources that is to some extent uh, unprecedented in the history of, of uh, 
of uh, Italy in terms of macroeconomic resources are used largely to favor markets and private actors rather than uh, furthering uh, state intervention in the economy and the possibility to really design an economy that works for the public rather than for private profit. So um, our effort was towards and it will be towards uh, writing the program of 25 Italy as to some extent a counter to this and to many of the problems that uh, the political management of the crisis has uh, uh, engendered. And so on this, we really want to open up the, the, the uh, participatory project uh, behind the enrichment of the, con uh, the content of uh, uh, the program that uh, we sent. Um, and uh, yeah, we would like uh, maybe, and on this probably uh, uh, other comrades will expand on, we would like uh, uh, this to form the basis of uh, uh, potentially in-person meetings where to kind of like then open up uh, these documents to, to the public and make them the basis of our future uh, action in the Italian uh, streets and towns and cities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ludovic. I'm getting tons of requests to speak here. Um, so if I can ask you all again to keep your interventions down to three minutes max, and then everyone will get the chance to speak. Next up, we've got Vera Lisa. Hi, all. Thank you very much. I'll be very quick because I want to leave the floor to other comrades. Firstly, I want to thank Janis for uh, his appreciation and uh, also for uh, recalling uh, Palestine situations. And uh, I just wanted to say that tomorrow I will, I will be in a demonstration uh, for Palestine uh, with uh, the DM flag. Uh, going uh, to the issues of our meeting, I would like to say just that uh, uh, I totally agree with what um, Melita said about the potential DM has uh, in Italy. Um, and I think that we could. Uh, concentrate on uh, some uh, really few um, questions, so which are the, the economical issues, of course, uh, and we need to uh, connect the European level with the national one, um, of course, which because it, it is in, in our nature, uh, but uh, just to uh, hit uh, the mantra of the balance uh, and uh, uh, we, we have to uh, re remember that uh, in the USA, uh, the state uh, uh, invested five uh, uh, five of five thousand million dollars. Uh, sorry, uh, trillion five thousand trillion dollars uh, uh, to face uh, the crisis, uh, while in the European uh, uh, Union. The recovery, the recovery fund is just uh, seven uh, five zero uh, million uh, uh, euros. So um, I think that uh, this is our starting point, and then we we've, we've got to go through the national recovery and resilience plan in Italy, which is incredible that we have that the word resilience in a public policy because it, it simply means that we can stand anything, that we can face anything, we can go on without changing anything. And this is, of course, not our mm, uh, uh, horizon. And then we, we've got to face the vaccine uh, campaign. And uh, uh, we heard Biden talking about the waving of patents, but uh, the truth, in my opinion, is that they are going to uh, make a lot of discussion of, of talks uh, without going nowhere and uh, uh, instead they could just use uh, the, the compulsory licenses which are already provided by the trips so this could be a contingent solution and this could be uh, a proposal we can uh, uh, spread and uh, uh, the hyper solution is in another time and in another uh, level of, of uh, international discussion. Uh, to answer to the question, Yanis uh, may said, uh, so how do we do 
this work in Italy. I think that we need to organize much more than we are. And uh, I thank Ludovico because uh, he broke uh, a sort of taboo. He talked about the party in Italy. And I think that this is what we are, uh, we, we need to concentrate our uh, efforts now. Uh, I just say that um, in Italy, uh, we suffer of at least 15 years of disappointment towards political representation, towards political uh, representatives. And uh, I feel that uh, uh, Italian people really expect to have uh, a, a new symbol in which to believe it, in, in, in which uh, to believe into, and uh, to vote. This is the need. Thank you. Thank you very Lisa. Michele. Yes, thanks, Meran, and thanks, everyone. Um, yes, I think, really, uh, as Vera Lisa and Ludovico were saying, uh, uh, now the, the time uh, is mature to, to try to, to start uh, a process deep in the Italian society, in the suffering uh, Italian society, uh, to launch this DN25 party that we already proposed in December 2019, before the pandemic, and the necessity then became the necessity of this kind of uh, political subjectivity, this novelty in Italy became, I think, uh, uh, day after day during the, the pandemic uh, as something that uh, uh, almost all our membership and beyond is, uh, is, is feeling as um, something we have really to do. And, uh, I think uh, regarding the, the analysis, social analysis, uh, political analysis, the comments uh, already said many things, so I'm not going to repeat. repeat. Uh, what I am going to do, uh, even if I'm not a lawyer like uh, uh, Vera Lisa, it's uh, like to read something that I think many Italian comrades, they know by heart. Any citizen has the right to freely establish parties to contribute to the determining national policy through democratic processes. This is the Article 49 of the Italian Constitution. And I, I wanted to read it because party, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bad word, you know? especially in, uh, it's perceived as a bad word uh, in the Italian um, cultural co uh, diffuse common sense, political and cultural common sense. And this is one of the reasons also why happened this uh, terrible, uh, uh, I don't know, disintegration of left political forces in Italy, because all became also the, the heritors of the greatest, uh, in terms of, uh, I don't know, at least the numbers, uh, Communist Party uh, in, uh, in, um, in Europe, uh, not considered Russian, <laughs> I mean, after Europe, because Russia is part of Europe, um, because they become all like electoral committees of few leaders, few leaders that at the end became leaders without, without I don't want to say army because it's not good. Uh, uh, so sometimes the army metaphor with politics, especially electoral politics, it works. Even we are, I think many of us more disciple of Anna Arendt and the idea to open political spaces, not just struggle in the uh, relation of forces but also open new types of political spaces. But uh, that's the point. I mean, um, there are a lot of leaders without people, right? Without neither, not only without uh, electoral consensus uh, or political following, but also without now, without activists. And it's all done in television, basically. Television squares. So now I, I think this is important also for us. Are we able to build up a political mass subjectivity, which is not under the threat of media hegemony on the way we are doing politics. And this is also about the sovereignty technology as we are doing politics. Now we are like uh, an indirect live stream. We are exploiting, exploiting YouTube and Facebook, all the instruments that financial capital is made conjointing this with innovation made by the state as uh, our friend Mariana Mazzucato also brought to the Italian public. And of course we have to act these instruments to change the structures. 
So one important thing is also uh, to uh, give a new, a new way of interpreting Article 1 of Italian Constitution. Italy is a democratic republic founded on labor. Now also labor by trade unions is often too traditionally interpreted and too, too often many categories of workers were left out by representation of trade unions. And there is also a problem there. How we represent the workers? On that, the Progress International made a gigantic job on creating the Make Amazon Pay campaign that as you maybe have, you have read was followed also by some uh, category uh, of uh, uh, our big uh, trade union, biggest trade union and other trade unions in Italy. Michele, uh, sorry to cut you off if you yeah, can yeah, conclude yeah. soon because we've got loads yeah, of people yeah, coming up other, after you. Yeah, I'm, I'm closing. The other thing is sovereignty belongs to the people and is exercised by the people in the forms and within the limits of the constitution. This is the second part of Article 1 of the Italian constitution. And also there, I think we need to create a new paradigm where the sovereignty is not only interpreted by the parliament, but is created by a series of assemblies, citizen assemblies, people assembly, call it as you want, new form of participatory and deliberative democracy that as, as DN, as uh, uh, let's say leaders of a broader movement, social movement, we are able to build up, to give representation, participation, direct participation to all the suffering people, all the people, they have not voice in this moment. So to really realize the article three, that is probably the most important with the Italian constitution, all citizens have, have, have equal social dignity and equal right before the law without discrimination. And it's the duty of the, the Republic to remove the obstacle for the real, for the real uh, 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 enforcement of these principles. Thank you, Michele. Um, next up, Piera, let's see if we can keep the three minute limit, please. Piera. Uh, hello, all comrades, all friends, all gathering people, young people. I am Piera Stefanini from Bologna now in, in winter time. And uh, alias Stefania Wolf uh, in radio and Facebook. Uh, as Stefania Wolf, I. <laughs> Uh, put uh, in my first uh, uh, issue the, the knowledge of uh, the important policies that uh, Mela 25, my, I, I love Mela 25, I'm sorry, I'm a little <laughs> passionate, uh, is uh, working in opposition in parliament. And I want to take, I wanted to take this voice uh, in Italy that was not uh, really very known. So thanks uh, all uh, and thanks a lot to Yanni because uh, you introduce a horrible, dramatic uh, problem. The, middle, uh, uh, the, um, the struggle of, uh, of Palestine, the struggle of Colombia, the struggle of international uh, issues that we have to follow, and the struggle also in Italy. We will, uh, in Bologna, you know, is a workshop, a political, very important workshop uh, with also our <laughs> small collective, uh, the SHGB Uno. We work at a lot, uh, we are uh, doing a lot of uh, manifestation. Uh, uh, yesterday for uh, Colombia, uh, to, tomorrow for, um, for uh, Palestinians. So we are, uh, Miestia, we say, <laughs> so a center of a struggle. But I was thinking uh, something now. Look, we were uh, uh, fighting uh, and supporting uh, yesterday in the main square Netuno, Bologna, uh, the, the struggle of the women of Colombia, SOS Colombia, that uh, are uh, uh, raped, are uh, killed for a fiscal uh, reform, 
uh, for the health health policy. And uh, now tomorrow we will uh, be together in solidarity with the people, the Palestinian people that is fighting for the land, for the houses. He, he talked about terricidio. And after we will uh, uh, fight on Saturday against our neoliberal patriarch, patriarchy policy of the Drago, of Draghi, of Dragoncello. And what do we want with the policy of Dra Dragoncello that is uh, near and so nice with the Salvini policy? We won't okay. fight, I will finish. We won't fight for the going drinking. Do you understand me? We won't fight for drinking. Have a nice beer and I apparently very expensive. This is now the situation dramatic in Italy. The, with uh, not also now, but before it was also, but now we have uh, this uh, drag neoliberal uh, wave that is very dangerous for us all, but for the women is something horrible. And uh, we are working a lot now. I have uh, to finish uh, also with the women. With the Thank women. You, Pierre. Thank you. Sorry to rush you off, but we've got 15 minutes because we've got another event that starts and we've got five more people to speak. Okay. So Thanks. next up, Carpe diem. thank you. And thank you for your passion, Fabrizio. Okay. Hi, I am a researcher associate of the National Research Council. I work in the field of health. There are three aspects I would like to highlight to the subject of health. One, vaccine. Health is a common good for our life begin. And this means the COVID must be eradicated in all countries of the world. We need to get the European Union to come out of this closure on vaccine. The vaccine is financed by public grants. It's possible to following the Biden position. For me, it's important that DiEM25 must push the European Union to stop the protection of vaccine patents. Two, national health system in European country. The health situation in different European countries is too different. Health is public good, a therefore uniformity of the care in needs across European countries. For me, it's important that DiEM quickly define a manifesto that is the guide to give obligation to various European countries so that the national health system is public and universal. Some ideas just exist. It is are shared by many associations. They share the need to depend and extend. For example, the, being, the world being is defined by OMA, World Health Organization. Second, expenditure of health must never follow the gold rule. Health spend is not current expenditure, but it is investment in life and therefore in this component. Health care must be person centered and not about treating of a clinical problem. Health care is a one health. It should be made a compulsory to comply with indicator by number of citizens. For example, hospital bid, physician, intensive care, social and the service, and all. Fabrizio, if I can ask you to please conclude soon because we've got some other speakers and we've got now 13 minutes left of this call. Go for it. For, okay, for the last point is the Global mm -hmm. Health Summit 20 May Rome. The summit should approve the principle of declaration of the room to prevent future global test cities for a joint commitment to build a new sustainable world. It's important that DiEM must be present together with another organization. Thank you. 
Thank you, Fabrizio. Andrea, your concise intervention starts now. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Very briefly, uh, first of all, let me say something about Europe. I think it's a shame that Europe has failed once again, this time to manage the pandemic. We haven't a common public vaccine. Europe has not responded to the pandemic by creating, for example, a solid research infrastructure for this virus and the possibility, the possible next one. It's a shame what we see in the Middle East, as Yanis said at the very beginning. It's a shame the absence of a fair and a humanitarian migration policy, while the horrors of uh, uh, Lesbos and Turkey continues, and citizens of the world continue to arrive, for example, here in Italy in uh, Lampedusa. It's for that that we must still fight for a, a better democratic Europe uh, altogether with the uh, DM25. Regarding Italy, I uh, can only say one thing. I Italians have already trusted and hoped in the outsider. Uh, politics. I mean, the self-proclaimed outsider of member of the Five Stars uh, uh, movement, which have failed miserably. So we can present ourselves in Italy and say, hi guys, we are the new outsiders. Uh, instead, I'm convinced that uh, we have to present ourselves with a few innovative and radical uh, political proposals and uh, open a, a big debate in our country. I mean, for example, uh, for some labor market proposals about working time and lifetime, uh, about a universal basic income, about the right to disconnect from digital uh, devices, uh, facing old and new problems with a new approach, possibly a re revolutionary approach. Thank you for the possibility. Thank you, Andrea. Luke. Good evening, everybody. Buonasera. Uh, thanks for uh, just letting me have my two or three minutes here. And uh, I uh, agree with very much of what's been said already. I share very most of the concerns here. And uh, obviously, what's behind most of the problems that have been emphasized this evening has been that I think we'd mostly agree on the uh, the structure of the political economy, but not only that, but I think the structure of, of our movements are uh, ourselves, you know, our own movements, and um, I think they, uh, I think we could take heed to uh, give a bit more attention to to the structure of our own movements and how we uh, how we communicate with uh, with with uh, popular audiences more and and the public in general. And uh, on that note, I know Antonella and I were started a conversation over the winter uh, uh, in terms of vision, not only for our movements, but for the economy. And uh, of course, on the heels, of course, of Giannis' uh, book as well, I was, I was very happy to, uh, to get Michael Albert in touch with Giannis uh, and have them start a conversation. And, and in terms of that, regarding that, we were hoping, I uh, just wanted to make a quick comment on the proposed um, uh, workshop this summer on post-capitalist vision. And um, so, you know, the question would be, well, why and why now? Why, why, why would this be an ample time to, uh, to come out with something like that? And I uh, just, you know, obviously in recent years uh, with the new generations coming up for post-Cold War, I mean, there was a, a very well-known Gannett poll from a few years ago that showed even uh, young, younger people in North America were so much more open, uh, looked more favorably on socialism than they did capitalism or whatever that socialism means luke sorry if i could ask you to conclude uh, because we're really cutting it fine i apologize to cut you off go no problem so i just just to the focus on that proposed workshop on the vision that we need i think there needs to be uh, much more emphasis placed on it and i think we need to ask ourselves much more uh first of all if we're trying to win a new society and if we are what what that's going to look like I think we need to place a lot more emphasis on that, and I hope I hope that's done in the coming period. Thank you, Luke. To mean something. Thank you, Luke. Apologies for the pressure, Dario. If you could do it very very fast, thirty seconds or so, because we're really running out of time, and then uh, go for it. Thank you, thank you. I'm very happy to be here and to be there at the same time. I just wanted to make uh, you know my appreciation to what Ludovico and Veraliza said before about searching and call to, calling to action 
especially the anti-mafia um, civil society. When I speak about civil society, I refer to a lot of uh, professionists and categories and institutions as well as public and private. We have to call for action all those people which are, I believe, uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, middle class, let's call it, uh, but they are able, I think, um, to promote or to be the, the next uh, leading generation in Europe and in Italy. Thank you. Thank you, Dario. Rosemary, you had a response to one of the questions yes, and then we'll conclude with Yanis. Go for it. Of the CC um, about <clears throat> our relationship to the Future of Europe conference. And uh, the European Constituent Assembly Task Force, of course, we've been working on the European constitution as a citizen-led European constitution from the beginning of DM25, as Melita will know. But the task force is about to send out a questionnaire, which will include, include a question, the question that she asked, what should be this relationship? Our concerns are threefold. Who should participate in a citizen-led EU constitution? Who should set the agenda? And what should some of the content be? So our 20 questions will also include, how should we relate? to a future of Europe conference that I have to say is not at the top of people's minds in vast swathes of the European public. So what was just said by Dario is very interesting. I think we should not rely on middle classes and NGOs and informed people who will be involved in the future of Europe conference process for a democratization of this whole process. We have to ask ourselves, how are we going to involve all the people who have been so oppressed and excluded and suffered under the pandemic. The EU has already dictated the agenda, so there's no question of asking people what agenda they actually want. They have four citizens' assemblies as a kind of disguise in university towns to say that they're going to be representing the people's voice, but actually they should be offering funds to every major town and city in Europe to organise their own citizens' assembly on what they would like to see from a European constitution and from the future of Europe. So. I think we've got plenty of work to do, but it is work to do to show what the alternative really is and what the priorities really should be. Thank you for a fascinating discussion on Italy, by the way. It's fascinating. Thank you, Rosemary. Yanis. Rosemary, you said it all about the importance of democratizing a process that sounds wonderful, but which was instituted, this um, Conference for the Future of Europe, uh, so as not to have a conference uh, for the future of Europe. Uh, remember how it, it happened. Uh, it was a proposal by Emmanuel Macron. And I can tell you, I can seriously tell you, I can put my, my, my hand on my heart and tell you that he stole this from Diem. And I know that because he told me. It was his idea to take the idea from, from Diem and completely to destroy it, to use it as a fig leaf for the fact that they are not putting the citizens at the center of the process of transforming the European Union. Diem's position has always been that the citizens' assemblies would be driving institutional change. And what they're doing is they're using a so-called you know, get-together for everybody to feel good about the fact that nothing is going to happen and that the citizens are not going to be empowered. In the same way that the initiatives, the, the European citizens' initiatives, you know, you gather one million votes and then they're put in a shelf, on a shelf, or in a box, and that's it, it's forgotten. It's a whole legitimizing process of not changing anything, whereas we are here to change things. Uh, uh, okay, now, down to the business. Look, today we had a first meeting. We were not going to uh, discuss everything and we were not going to write a manifesto amongst us. Uh, it was uh, an important opportunity, firstly, to herald the beginning of a new relationship between the CC and activists of Diem Italia, uh, to thank all of you for the work that went into these wonderful answers to the questionnaire, and to start the process. So I have a concrete proposal, as we like to say in Diem 25, and it is this, that now we put out your answers, as they are, without any interventions from the CC, put them out for consultation, to say to our members, okay, here's a, here are the questions, here are the collective answers we received from members of Diem Italia, okay? What do people think generally across the movement, not just from Italy, but 
from everywhere regarding the situation in Italy, regarding the answers to the questions that are pertinent to Italy. Uh, and the, the, once we get all the data in, all the data and all the responses, to agree on a, a, a path that would lead to the writing of a manifesto. I think we should also, within the next few weeks, at most, find a way of agreeing to a date in the future for a DM Italia assembly, where important decisions will be made or proposals will be put to the rest of the movement so that we can have an old member vote for, to decide what we're going to do. Uh, we have, as part of the discussion, to distinguish what the movement does as opposed to what a, an electoral wing does. And last but not least, comrades, we need a leadership team, you know, because in the end, you know, we, if we have an electoral wing, if we manage to make a splash, to work with others and other movements across Italy in the context of, com of uh, common campaigns, Somebody is going to have to re represent us in the media uh, to speak for DiEM25 in Italy. And I'm not saying that we have to create this leadership team now, but have it in your mind that the two go together. The organizational part, the writing of the manifesto, and the creation of a leadership team. And remember, we are a pan-European movement. Uh, that will be something that will be decided by everybody in DiEM25, those inside of Italy and outside of Italy. Thank you, Yanis. And uh, that concludes our, our call today. We, sorry for putting our foot on the gas at the end of the call, but we have a, a second call which is coming up and you out there can also tune into it. That's the launch of Meta, the new research and cultural center of DM25. There is a link in the YouTube chat for that. As for our coordinating um, collective calls, the next one will be a fortnight from now where we'll be discussing the UK and that will be at the old time of 7 p.m. CET. So thank you again to everyone here, to our colleagues in uh, DM25 in Italy and uh, thank you out there for tuning in. See you in two weeks. Let me, let me put the, the link Go for it, but if you put it in the Zoom chat, we'll lose it. Okay, just let me say that, you know, just go into, um, in, into YouTube and just type META, M-E-T-A, Center for Post-Capitalist Civilization and join the fund.